Rakesh ji, please make Sanjeev Mehta sir post. Okay. okay.
Rakesh ji, please make Dr. Yasir Lone co-host. He'll be answering today. Dr. Yasir Lone, can you hear me? Uh, please unmute yourself. Hello? Yes, we can hear you. Thanks. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Be online. Yeah, Yasir is from? Uh, uh, Kokleban Hospital. Oh, good. <laughs> Sanju has joined, na? Dr. Sanju Mehta. Yes, sir. Yes, joined, sir. <clears throat> Achin, yes, sir. when we reach to investigations, okay. that is the time we will invite him. Okay, sir. You can talk about the uh, stone analysis and the metabolic workup. Hello, good evening. I'm, I'm Dr. Achin. Yeah, so, so please join us. Too. Rakesh ji, make Mr. Ojas Poddar co-host, he'll be answering. So today, Yasir and Ojas, these two are going to answer? Yes, sir. Doctor, just can you start on your video, please? Yes, yes, yes. So, so thank you.
Sachin, do you have a number of uh, Dr. Maheshwari and uh, Dr. Gite? No, sir. Good evening, Pankaj. Good evening. Good evening, sir. Good evening. You got a message, na, Pankaj, about a case? About what case? About today's case. I had put it on the teacher's. No. Yes, yes. Today's case, I'm aware. So as soon as I think Dr. Jitay joins. Sir, I have joined already. Okay, okay. Sir, good evening, sir. Join, sir. Good evening, good evening, Dr. Gita. Yes, good evening. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, yeah. sir. Good evening, sir. Dr. Ivan Sanjeev Mehta has also joined. Good evening, sir. We just wait for one or two minutes. 9.05 is start. Sure. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Hi, Sanjeev. Bye, bye. Namaskar, sir. You know, Pankaj? Haji. Sir, Namaskar, sir. In our conference, last conference in USI, mm -hmm. uh, big, big thing about Dr. Sanjeev Mehta, mm. uh, Dr. Mahesh Jesai, mm. he praised uh, during his talk when he was giving a, like, you know, a talk about the <laughs> formation and analysis. Hmm. I, I attended that talk. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That yes. is his greatness, sir. <laughs> You're hard working, definitely. I think we should start now, right? Yes, sir. 
Yes. Yeah. Okay. So today, I think Yasir and Ojas. Yes, sir. Yes. Correct. These two yes, are sir. going to ask. Yes. Huh? So keep your mind open. Okay. Don't get biased with the topic and answer properly. Fine. Okay. Achin, go ahead. Uh, starting sir, a Hindu gentleman, 24 years of age, factory worker, resident of Mumbai, came with complaints of right flank pain since three months. So, oh, just, just elaborate. Yes, sir. So, first I'd like to ask the uh, nature of the pain. So, onset duration of, uh, the onset we already mentioned three months back. Uh, then, uh, the, uh, the nature of the pain, whether it was uh, colicky pain, whether it was continuous dull aching pain, uh, then any aggravating relieving factors, any history of medication taken for the pain, uh, any other associated symptoms with the pain as in uh, uh, fever, hematuria, uh, uh, any uh, history related to altered bowel habits, uh, if the pain is aggravated on meals, after meals or uh, whether relieved by meals, uh, then uh, these are the symptoms, uh, associated symptoms I like to ask, sir. Yasir, you want to add anything? No, sir. Uh, the uh, progression of the pain, how was the progression of the pain? Uh, and plus, uh, I would like to ask uh, any uh, radiation or referral of the pain and whether it was colicky or non colicky in nature. Uh, plus, uh, was there any history of any uh, surgery done before? Three months or after at the time of the three months when the patient had the uh, onset of the pain. Uh, plus, I would like to uh, ask the history of any trauma. Uh, that's all good. And in negative history, any history of uh, hematuria, as OJS is already told, uh, any history of fever. Any history of LUTS, lower unit right symptoms, and okay. uh, associated with vomiting, associated with nausea, vomiting, uh, diarrhea. Uh, that's all. Rest is used to. Okay. Fine. Gajin, go ahead. Then we'll ask Dr. Maheshwari if he wants to add anything. Yes. Patient was apparently asymptomatic three months back when he started developing right flank pain in CJC in onset, gradually progressive, dull aching type, continuous in nature, relieved by medication, aggravated by moving around, non radiating type with no positional variation. Yeah, go ahead. No history of nausea, or vomiting, no history of any fever or burning maturation, no history of any lithuria or hematuria previously, no history of any trauma, no history of any previous similar complaints. No issue of facial puffiness, lower limb medium or exertional dyspnea. So, uh, Dr. Pankaj, you want to, because now in the exams they are going to ask, we have to train them about, you know, uh, history taking also to some extent. So, we will not spend much time, but if you want to give any comments on this. So, all I would want to say is at the end of history, it is very important to summarize it in two lines. Fine. So the examiner knows what you are thinking. So I would at this time say that, okay, this is a young man who has presented with right flank pain, uh, no associated findings noted. So, and move forward. Okay, fine. So all of you now understand uh, yes, uh, the importance of yes. two or three, you know, you have to summarize at the end. So that will be very helpful to all of you. Fine. Achin, go ahead. Yes. Sir, past history, no history of any diabetic matters, hypertension or ischemic heart disease, no history of any previous surgery, family history, nothing contributory, personal history, diet is mixed, appetite adequate, bubble bladder regular, sleep is undisturbed, habits is. There is no patient is a non smoker, non tobacco chewer, non alcoholic. Okay, oh, just now, yes. as Dr. Uh, he has said, just summarize in three or four lines. Uh, 24 year old gentleman with complaints of right flying pain. We started around three months back, which was in serious in onsets, progressive in nature, not uh, progressive in nature, uh, dull aching in uh, progressive and dull aching in nature, uh, uh, relieved by medication, 
and uh, there are no other aggregating factors and no other uh, other yeah. positive findings sir no other no other associated comorbidities comorbidities yes perfect so looking at this as usual we have got a plank pain we are urologists and we know so looking at this history what are the just as usual what are the differential diagnoses yes sir uh, so for right flank pain uh, i would like to there can be uh, differential diagnosis would be one uh, with this is related to the kidney it could be a stone disease uh, in renal stone disease or ureteric calcula it could be cystic disease of the kidney it could be poj obstruction this was for the kidney and the ureter urinary tract system and then uh, it can be associated with uh, any liver or gallbladder pathology uh, any acute uh, any cholecystitis or uh, gallbladder stones uh, it could be associated with right bowel pathology as in right colon or the uh, ascending uh, ascending colon pathology it could be muscular pain it could be costochondritis this would be the differentials so in, in the kidney what are the four differential diagnoses you like to give sir renal calcula uh, ureteric calcula cystic diseases pgj obstruction or a renal mass renal or adrenal mass okay gita sir you want to add anything um, sir two point one is uh, in while taking the urological history there must be a history suggestive of uh, chronic renal failure there is no history suggestive of chronic renal failure one line yes. should be always there another thing is uh, why why there is a, why he someone is interested in history of trivial trauma because in case of trivial trauma and if patient has a normal kidney he may not have some uh, pain for longer time uh, when when whenever there is a pathological kidney that is like kidney with cyst kidney anomalous kidney or ectopic kidney obstructed kidney hydronephrotic kidney in such patients only the there is history of trivial, trivial trauma is important in personal history again if you are asking for uh, mm-hmm. urological case the intake occupation and uh, uh, general examination obesity family history he, he, here in family history uh, three uh, commonly occurred uh, urological familial problem pertaining to that they should have asked this. for example uh, renal malignancy there is family history required stone disease there is family history required these are the things with uh, keeping yeah. in mind they have to ask, they will they should ask the family is other nothing yes. particular nothing particular means what yes sir so ajay yes sir can you give, uh, dr jite has just told you so what are the important uh, importance of family history what are the uh, like you start with the stone and malignancy you tell us yes. so sir, first one, one, one is, comment sir one comment uh, regarding the causes of pain which was asked to you so yes, i think that you should just classify into urological and non urological rather than just giving all the causes together okay, and in, in the urological causes you should tell the common things first if you tell cystic disease right on top i don't think patient really presents with pain you can say stone disease yes, hydronephrosis due to whatever cause q junction obstruction or clot colic or uh, mass in the kidney and then come to cystic diseases and then classify the non urological causes whatever you said so if you yes. classify then examiner knows okay you are thinking properly yes sir okay sir. fine okay so you tell us family yes sir family history for stone diseases uh, stone diseases for it could be family history of uh, primary hyperoxaluria uh, then for uh, distal renal tubular acidosis there is barter syndrome den disease Uh, these are the family history for stone for renal malignancies uh, von hippel lindau syndrome men syndrome uh, uh, neurofibromatosis type 2 uh, uh, these are the ones we should be asked upon so in the stone disease anything else uh, cystin cystin yeah, urea cystin urea cystin stone cystin plus primary primary hyperparathyroidism Uh, we have a family of uh, this hyperparathyroidism can be the cause of the uh, recurrent uh, uh, urolithiasis anything else apart from genetics uh, ministry their habits uh, then dietary habits da- da- uh, 
a dietary history would be also elicited as in uh yeah so ask the pankaj how often it is common to have the uh, like you know water and the dietary habit what is the importance you uh, think uh, it is important to know whether the patient is vegetarian or non vegetarian especially because red meat has a very significant relation with stone disease again if you means you have included smoking and tobacco in the personal history but that is also one important thing from stone disease point of view and uh, occupation is important if person is something where he is exposed to excessive heat maybe a field worker so fluid intake may be less and sweating may be more but other than this uh, uh, i think not much significant so mainly in the stone disease uh, instead of uh, dietary habits and water uh, genetic is the most important cause correct yes sir yes, yes. so once they say that there is no family history of stone disease uh, i think that covers everything oh it fine okay achin go ahead yes sir local examination for abdomen patient is abdomen supine position with implied informed consent with exposure from nipple to knee adequate room light inspection umbilical centrally placed all coordinates moving equally with respiration no scar sinus or engorgement palpation there is no local rise of temperature no tenderness uh, bladder is not palpable percussion tympanic not present all over the abdomen with normal liver dull span auscultation normal bowel sounds present external genitalia grossly normal all hernial orifices are normal so after listening your history you have missed the important thing because you had a loin pain and you should be targeted towards the flank so, renal fullness and morphe sign should be fullness in... tenderness lump yes sir fullness tenderness lump in the flank is important flank. there should there is no renal full renal flank renal angle fullness there is no renal angle tenderness so any tenderness. any renal palpable lump yes sir इम्पोर्टेंट क्योंकि अगर हिस्ट्री में तुम लॉयन पेन इनको इम्पोर्टेंट क्या है कि प्राइमरी प्रेजेंटेशन इज लॉयन पेन फ्लैंग पेन इन दैट आल्सो रेनल स्टोन एंड यूरेट्रिक स्टोन दीज आर टू डिफरेंट दे प्रेजेंट डिफरेंटली व्हेन यू आर पुटिंग अ डायग्नोसिस ऑफ रेनल स्टोन इट इज अ डल एक्टिंग इंटरमीडियंट पेन अटेंडिंग टू ओनली द लॉयन टू जेनाटेलिया This is lower view just one associated always with torus symptoms, burning, uh, frequency, urgency, sometimes uh, uh, intermittent hematuria. So, uretric stone and renal stone in this this in this particular patient both diagnosis cannot be given. If it is uretric stone, the patient uh, patient uh, ureter or kidney is try to overcome that obstruction by doing the vigorous peristalsis. Pain is different, and that pain is different. Then the pain. diffuse pain, intermittent pain. This is this may be due to the, for example, malignant, for example, pelvic lar stone. So this, this renal pain is due to the stretching of the capsule. Capsule, yes, sir. Stretching of the capsules. So this this is this basic condition, a basic difference you must know. Another thing is why there is vomiting in such such type of case in the urinary bowel. So there is a reflux gastric spasm. When when our when our patient had a pain in the ureteric colic, there is a reflux gastric spasm or pyloric spasm that will end up into the vomiting. This is the primary cause for vomiting in case of the ureteric colic. This yeah. can be a no roots can be a in exam. So ये पता रहना चाहिए. ठीक है, go ahead. Okay. Achin, go ahead. The respiratory system, sir, air entry bilaterally equal. CVS S1 has to present no murmurs. CNS no abnormality detected. Fine. Yes, sir. This is the history. Now you know probable differential diagnosis. Now what you want to do? 
Uh, I'll start to investigate the patient as uh, uh, the st uh, investigation. We will start with the routine uh, uh, investigations. Uh, I would like to do the uh, CBC uh, renal function test, uh, urine routine, uh, and urine culture. And uh, after that, ECG and X-ray test. This will be the routine investigation. After uh, the routine investigation, I will uh, like to do the uh, uh, USG uh, abdomen plus pelvis. Yes, sir. Two comments here. One yeah. is don't use the word routine. Okay. When we are investigating, there is nothing routine about it. And two... Uh, why are you doing ECG and X-ray chest at this time? ECG and X-ray chest would be an investigation which is needed perioperative. You see, any yeah. investigation you do should give you some further pathway. Means if, a, if this patient really comes to your OPD today, would we be asking ECG, X-ray chest? I don't think. After uh, complete examination of the patient and taking the history, there are two or three diagnoses in your mind, that is stone, PUG, cystic disease, or any other option. Okay. So you have to ask the investigations targeting to your diagnosis. Precisely. Okay. So, so ECG and x chest will be needed once you have taken a decision for surgery. Uh, this patient... Uh, doesn't have a fever. This patient doesn't have, you don't have any report of urine suggest of multiple pustules. You don't have any report of basal TLC. Why you are asking for urine culture? It's not indicated absolutely at this time. CBC, urine routine, serum creatinine, one ultrasound. If you want one X-ray QV. Yes, this, this is the end of your story. See, either of one investigation will give clue or doing the further investigation. Yes. If same patient had a suppose fever, suppose line renal angle tenderness, then there is emergence. Then admission, parallelly giving the urine culture, inject, starting the injectable antibiotic, taking the blood pressure, signs of sepsis, everything is again come into picture. But here only the only one presentation is left line. It can be anything. So I 100% agree that this is not the time to get culture test done and definitely no anesthesia related investigations at this time. Yes. So I think all of us agree on that. Ajay, yes, sir. show him whatever uh, initial investigation we have done. Sir, hemoglobin is 15.4, count is 9000, serum creatine is 2.2, sir. And yes, urine... not seen. Yeah, okay. Uh, urine routine micro report RBCs are 6 to 8 per hyperfield, per cell 62 to 64 per hyperfield, and pH is neutral, so 6. Albumin trace and RBC trace. Are you surprised, Achint? Or are you, uh, sorry, yes, sir, are you surprised at these investigations or you are okay with it? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, the uh, urine examination showing the pus cells uh, 62 to 64 with no fever. What does that mean? Urinary First and foremost, you see, as a urologist, hmm. let's start stop calling it pus cells. Yes, sir. Okay, let's start calling it WBC because the moment you call it Purcells, our mind starts hinting towards infection. Let's call them WBCs so that we know that it comes not only in infection but also in multiple inflammatory situations. Yes, a small stone can also give rise to a, a 6 to 8 RBCs and uh, 50 60 WBCs. Okay, yes, sir. so uh, I am not surprised at this. Uh, are you not surprised at creatinine 2.2? Yes, sir. The creatinine is 
high 2.20 uh, but having a history of 3 months intermittent pain yeah, but why you are surprised it's a not surprise uh, we will like to evaluate now we have the creatinine levels and we mm -hmm. have some albuminuria in the urine so you have a patient who has come with symptoms on one side exactly so if yes, on solitary side disease if the creatinine is high my antenna get raised okay sir okay this patient coming with bilateral flank pain and a creatinine of 2 i would be okay okay bilateral obstruction is possible now, why is this creatinine elevated with one-sided disease? So, the crux in the urine routine examination is biorea, albuminuria, hematuria. Yes, but sir. no TLC red. Okay. So, yes, sir. What, whatever the sir is telling, that first cell, in spite of calling first cell, it should call it as a WB. Indirectly, it is suggestive of inflammation. Yes, but patient yes. not in the sepsis or eurosepsis. Another thing, raised creatinine. If one sided kidney, suppose it's born, still the creatinine should be normal. If one sided kidney is normal, that means yes. there should be some other medical disease which is causing the damage to the opposite side kidney on microscopic level. There are chances. So, so with this report, medicine. in my mind, there will be one, as Dr. Gita Zab has said, that probably other side kidney is poor. Or, second thing, I'll start contemplating does this patient have a solitary kidney? Agreed. So these are the two things which come to my mind the moment I see raised creatinine with one-sided symptoms. Yes, sir. So we can also take the history of if the patient has some previous report of serum creatinine into. Absolutely. No, whether it's not in case of CKD. Fine. Okay. So show the uh, ultrasonography. <clears throat> Sanjeev Mehta sir has to take over. Yeah, so after this, we will go ahead with the Dr. Sanjeev Mehta's presentation. Because then we are going for a metabolic workup. Just to add to uh, Maheshwari sir, there was a, a discussion in CMC Velour for one hour on urine routine. And Kekre sir got very angry because somebody said puzzle. So he repeatedly said that pus cell is a dead cell. You must call it WBC. And being WBC. a urology resident, you must say WBC. And any inflammation, whether it is stone, malignancy, obstruction, stone, uh, uh, you know, foreign body. Like many times, we see physician says, sir, both pus cell hai. But there is a digestant inside. Patient is absolutely asymptomatic. With a digestant, you will always see 35 to 40 WBCs. So it is not infection, it is because of inflammation in the urinary tract. So this must be a take home message. It should be very clear that you should not say persons. You must tell your lab also to, to say WBC. Another important thing here is if I am suspecting some, this is on opposite side also, just check the morphology of RBC. Yes, sir. If the RBCs are dysmorphic, and itself, it is suggestive of there is some, some medical analysis. Correct. Fine. Yes. Go ahead. Okay. So, see the sonography report and you just tell us how, what to do. And then I will invite Dr. Sanju Mehta. Yes, Ojas. Oh, yes, sir. Uh, so, the upper, the left and most side shows liver. Liver seems normal. Uh, then, okay. where you can see the liver? This is the uh, topmost film, I think, on the left hand side. And then the, uh, so the first, the first one. Okay, there is, yeah. There is. Okay, this one. Okay, fine. Then, yeah, then uh, trace it. Achin, show him. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. Is difficult for you to read and comment, then I will just read the report. The images are not actually so clear. Huh. Yes, you want to try? 
so the inmates are not actually clear in the uh, image sixth one we can see so this is a bladder seen bladder seems normal uh, good capacity bladder wall thickness is normal prostate seems uh, prostate is uh, seems normal then uh, the lower most films uh, we can't identify sir cystic is seen could be it seems there is gross dilatation of the yes pelvic lsl system pelvic system with cortex cmd differentiation is uh, not maintained and a very thin line of cortex is seen surrounding the gross dilatation system and it's a huge kidney 25 by 13 cm yeah yes sir and i think in one of the images the opposite kidney looks very small very small correct yes just show him yeah in this uh, i think right. the third row last image uh, yeah yes sir yes sir yes yes in this image yeah see it's very small yes so the kidney is small and little dilated pelvis as you can see just yes, below sir. that okay yes, fine sir. okay Achin, just show them the report. So in the report, right kidney measures twenty-five by fourteen centimeters in size, with normal parenchyma, and thickness is one point two centimeters. Significant dilation of the right pelvic lysis system, with dilated right renal pelvis, with right large renal pelvic and upper polar calculi. Left kidney is only four point eight into one point eight centimeter, with scarred parenchyma. Uh, reflectivity and thinned out, no dilatation of the PCS system, and so this much. Urine bladder is there is no intrinsic lesion. Okay, fine. So uh, we will stop here. I will invite uh, uh, Dr. Sanjeev Mehta. Uh, Dr. Sanjeev Mehta is a MD pathologist working exclusively on urinary stone disease. uh evaluation and stone prevention at his euro lab at ahmedabad he is trained at louis herring laboratory orlando florida usa and have been faculty at various national and international conferences so far he has performed more than 70000 stone analysis and 24 hours urine metabolic profile profile tests engaged in many research project studies and treated with stone disease we have got sanju meta here achin can yes, you sir. just uh, ah sir i am sir. stopping my stop uh, i am stopping screen share sir sanjeev sir you can join in sir okay is that my slides are visible yes sir we can yes. see your slides yes. okay yeah so namaste and thank you gorang bhai and all for inviting me i am just uh, going to speak about the stone disease evaluation in pathology lab and its role in the management of stone disease we all know that stone disease is having three main issues first it's it's high incidence rate especially in a country like india where we have not number of stone beds the recurrence is the key issue and there are many underlying abnormalities associated with the stone disease now objective to treat uh, the disease particularly the stone disease is to make uh, the patient free of this disease itself but in stone disease there is another which is more important issue is to stop the recurrence of the stone disease if we have a right approach or uh, then the treatment is possible once we know the what are the means abnormalities which are causing the stone disease the ultimate goal of stone disease is the prevention of the recurrence of the disease now the prevention it's not a myth it is very much attainable stone crystal specific has to be done it should not be a non specific stone then it is easier to take the to achieve our goal superposition of the urine is the key 
which we are going to talk more about that later. Ultimately, the prevention is a long-term goal, which involves changes in the diet and the lifestyle and the medication. We must first try to look the possible cause of the preventable causes of stone disease. Now lab reports now can very much explain whether the patient's treatment is achievable as per our goal or per the design of our treatment. What lab cannot, just a minute, yeah. <laughs> what a lab role, uh, laboratory plays a, its role, what lab cannot tell you, you will not know by your instinct. What labs tell you in error, you will not correct by your instinct again. So everything should be done very appropriately on a lab or to a place which is with the um, investigation part of the stone. Ultimately, there is no expenses as reasonable as of the misdirected treatment. If we look to the management part, if we consider the three years recurrence of the stone and the patient which are having the, if we are taking the measures of non-specific uh, measures of treating, uh, managing the stone, the patient generally, the stone disease recurrence in the 60% of patients in next three years. But if we take the specific measure which are based on the proper evaluation of the stone disease, this recurrent risk can be reduced to 50 to 15 to 20 percent. <clears throat> this is just a single diagram which is uh, uh, explaining how the stone gets super saturated and then it forms the stone. You know there are two types of components. One are in our body, which are one are the prevent uh, stone preventers, uh, stone promoters, and another group is the stone inhibitors. Promoters are level as calcium, sodium, oxalate, urate, cysteine, and all those uh, uh, crystal forming elements. Inhibitors are uh, phosphate, magnesium, and citrate. So combined together, they they make they are dissolved in the stone uh, in the urine generally. But whenever their concentration increases, then what happens, the stone, the urine starts becoming saturated. Ultimately, the, it, the concentration becomes so much because of either domination of the promoters or inhibition or diminution of the inhibitor factors. And this to it causes the super saturation of the uh, urine and ultimately it forms the urinary stone. There are many uh, other mechanisms I'm not going into details because of lack of the time. If we are coming to the evaluation of stone disease in the laboratory, first comes regular, the routine tests, which we prescribe, depending upon the history of the patient and the age and other things, whether the patient is diabetic or not. The special test includes space stone analysis and 24 hours metabolic profile with supersaturation. This is a gold standard. Super saturation, all those pro profiles with uh, the test we uh, prescribe should be done with this super saturation. We'll discuss more about that. So now the because of advancements in the stone analysis and all this blood and urinary chemical analysis method, we can find out the cause of stone in most of the cases. Coming to the basic test, our routine test, this is as just uh, we'll go into the brief. If you're finding in the blood test certain abnormalities like low potassium and bicarbonate, we should think about the renal tubular acidosis. This is very important because the RTA, it changes entirely the treatment plan. Urine with the high uric acid is associated with the uric acid diathesis. High persistent calcium one should think about the primary hyperparathyroidism. Low phosphorus is associated with renal phosphorus leak and depends on the history and other findings, we should think about the 
parathyroid hormone estimation also. Coming to the urine, if pH is alkaline, more than pH is very important in urine. We all know that. If it is more than 7.5, then one should give thought about the infection uh, lithiasis. We were in the previous uh, presentation, we are discussing about the plus cells or WBCs, but at the same time in that urine, we should think about the what is the pH of urine because it gives lots of clues. If pH is highly acidic, uh, less than 5.5, just give a thought about uric acid lithiasis. The sediments should also be examined thoroughly because sediments again in urine examination are important and give, it gives very important clues about the stone disease. A cysteine is also a rare uh, disease, cysteine stones. There is a very simple qualitative test for cysteine urea also, which can be performed and it is a, a, it's a very low cost investigation. So these are all just basic tests. I have just gone through very fast. Uh, another thing, just depends on the history, try to look up about the primary causes and go for screening. This is just a list of the primary causes which forms the stone. Because once we, we can find out this primary causes, then it is very easy to take the preventive steps for the stone. So this is just a um, uh, list. Some more important are like hyperparathyroidism, hyperthyroidism, thyrocardiosis. This is renal tubular acidosis, primary hyperoxaluria, even chronic diarrhea, bowel disease all should also be considered in the, while we are taking the history of the patient because that can form the stone and we can easily cure them. Coming to the stone analysis, to manage a stone, one should know the what crystal that stones consent. So stones are made up of crystals and we should take all the steps, all the measure which prevents the, those formation of the stones. We need not to discard the stones without analysis because a simple small stone can have many answers. It might be the first manifestation of many new uh, pathological conditions. And of course, when subsequent stones are formed over the period of time, uh, uh, over the period of time, one should go for analysis of the stones because st the crystals can change. And it has been reported that, that over the period of time, 20, in 25%, 21% of the cases, the composition of stone changes. Then again, the mixed stones are most deceptive stones because it can have many other conditions associated with them. This is just a list of the types of stone. Uh, there are about 65 stones, not those four groups, calcium or white stones. So these are, these are the types of stone which usually comes to the lab. There are some rare stone, but they are also reported because we get bulk of the stones. We are, all, we are having most of these rare type of stones also in our record. Renal stone analysis is again essential step in the initial treatment of lithiasis. This composition can yield four important things. One is the metabolic abnormalities associated with that, presence or absence of infection, uh, struvite stone, we know that, possible artifacts. Sometimes what happens, the laboratory receives, instead of stones, patient being some sand particles or some seed particles also, to find out those artifacts is also very important. It uh, reflect, it uh, can uh, suggest the story of drug metabolism also, because there are many drugs which causes stone formation. Now, because of this advanced techniques, we can find out that what is the drug exactly which is causing the stone formation. There are certain stones which can be identified by stone analysis only. And believe me, means uh, only this visual um, estimation is many times very much deceptive because what you, if you feel like that this is a, 
life depends on the color it's a uric acid stone but if we analyze it we find that this centrum central place or apparent uh, nucleus of the stone consists of the calcium oxalate but these are the stones which can be identified by only stone analysis uric acid cysteine stone struvite stones which are formed by drug ammonium uric acid stone stones by 2,8 dihydroxynine deficiencies this is this occurs mainly in pediatric stones and silicate stones this is how reports can be given now it is it can be given against a graph also one can estimate what was the size of the stone and here are the different compositions are the given again coming to the significance they, there are we can again divide into three categories the composition and hardness of renal stones composition and its predictive values and its related metabolic desires this is just a list of stone uh, the hardness of stone if we consider calcium oxalate dihydrate stone as a one then these are the relative uh, relative uh, harder stones like monohydrate is 1.3 times harder Brushite stone, as we see, it's a two point two, which is more than double uh, a hard a hardness in the as compared to the calcium oxalate dihydrate stone. Cysteine stone, you can see, are very hard stone, and it is very difficult to break by the lithotripsy and by even laser treatment also. So this is all we can find out uh, relative. Uh, hardness of the stone based on its composition also coming to the idiopathic calcium stones which are the most common they can be pure or they can be mixed also mixed stone can have more than two compositions and each composition gives clue about the possible cause of that stone the phosphate component in the stone composition always remember it is most challenging uh, component to treat and find out the associate abnormalities also the best results are given i can be find out with the 24 hour metabolic profile also we where we can measure the abnormality in the uh, metabolic status of the stone these are all predictive values like calcium oxalate monohydrate are generally associated with hyperoxaluria hypomagnesuria urine is generally Uh, acidic the volume of the urine patient is drinking less water and they cause more uh, this um, monohydrate stone which are harder than dihydrate huh? calcium oxalate dihydrate dihydrate stones they are having generally hypercalciuria and hypocalciuria the urine in such cases are mainly alkaline the phosphate stones they are about 12 to 20% struvite stone they are because of stone uh, infection formation the incidence are now it is in, i have observed in last 10 year the number of struvite stones are now reducing possibly because of better treatment carbonate uh, apatite they are not always because of infection and brushite stone again because such stones needs further metabolic studies and the Uh, one should keep possibility of renal tubular acidosis and hyperparathyroidism with associated with such type of the stones coming very far because i have limited time we'll talk about the 24 hour metabolic profile and here again besides the number of 15 16 tests the super saturation index is very much essential and it's a gold standard the indications for to go for metabolic uh, evaluation that is 24 hours urine metabolic estimation is the patients which are first timer but they are motivated and many time they want to find out and they want to investigate further then the patient with uh, recurrence of stones again first time st stone farmers which are which are having uh, bilateral uh, kidney stones bilateral and multiple solitary kidney renal stone with renal insufficiency if there is any residual stone burden then again extremes of ages very young patient and very old patient 
patient with gout, then again with distal renal tubular acidosis, nephrical nephrocalcinosis, patient with the recurrent urinary tract infection and associated with pathological fracture and the patient with family history. Sometimes in health checkup also, if the father is having already stone, their children, they should also be investigated to find out uh, the possibility of uh, their stone formation and so that uh, preventive steps can be taken. This is how these reports are given. Certain 14, 15 tests are done in metabolic profile. Here you can see, <coughs> and this is a graphic presentation. This is uric acid, oxalate, calcium, citrate. This is pH and this is urinary volume, sodium, again, phosphorus, magnesium. And these three are super saturation index. Now combined together, all these value, this is a yellow is the cutoff value. All those who are in red, for example, uric acid here, it's 450, it is in green. It means, it means the uric acid in this particular patient are normal means. They are not at high risk. Those values who are in the red color, automatically the software puts them in a high risk zone. For example, the oxalate, there it is hyperoxaluria, which is 49.2. Similarly, the patient is having calcium 429. The graph comes further higher. Patient is having hypocytriuria. Here, zero is upside. And that is why the patient is showing the low level upside. So again, it is high risk. Now combined together, this patient is having pH, urine pH is 6, and that is again it's red. Now combined together, this software itself calculates and finds out the supersaturation index. This is high again. Supersaturation index of calcium oxalate is high, calcium phosphate is high, and while uric acid is within the normal range. The purpose of this metabolic profile is to find out what are the risk factors. And we have seen that in follow-up patient, suppose if we correct the urinary volume, other values also improves. And like, for example, if the volume comes, to it, here it is only 1.5 liters. Ideally, it should be around 2.5 liters. If the patient drinks plenty of water and urine output reduce, increases, these values also improves. And it is super saturation in, uh, improves. So purpose of treatment is to manage these factors, either by giving uh, the medicines or by oral hydration or by correction of pH of that urine. So combined together, it uh, brings this super saturation index to the below the yellow line. And there we can say, yes, patients, the, if we are taking proper steps to prevent the further recurrence of the stone. So this is the metabolic profile is a very good profile. One should find out exactly measurable things and one should find out what are the risk factors and what, how to manage them. This is just an example of a same single patient over the period of one, one year. Here you can see th these two uh, columns are giving the reports at different interval of, uh, of time of same patient. You can see these uh, values were high in this patient. After a gap of time, when the patient followed the treatment, all those uh, values had come down. And the supersaturation index has come to the normal values. So this should be the ideal goal of management of treatment of a patient. So this is just in short, I told you, the management. Now, ultimately, to conclude, we need the following uh, five steps. First of all, one is supposed to know the stone crystal. Secondly, obtain proper blood and urine measurements by screening for the systemic disorders and to measure the 24 hours urine supersaturation by 24 hours urine metabolic profile. Third is the to, to one should take the measures to lower, lower the supersaturation to the half of the initial values. 
if you obtain all this then obtain more 24 hour urine values if the stone persists in that patient and then you do follow up every year even if the patient is free of uh, the disease to know the patient is taking a, as i said it's a long term goal so to judge the whether patient is taking all the necessary precautions and following the advice one should get to uh, go to repeat the same uh, test of metabolic profile after interval of one year if patient is not recording then same profile ideally it should be done after interval of the every three, three to four months so these are all in short about the stone disease evaluation and role of the laboratory in the management of stone disease so that's all and i just hand over back to the uh, the who is managing i think my part is over i think anything any questions if anybody want and if you have a time go run by yes no problem you you can always be around and uh, we'll mm -hmm. ask the students if they have got any question it is uh, your presentation is real eye opener and you have shown that how important it is to do a metabolic workup and not only that that after the treatment we must repeat your investigation so the most important thing is that number one we must ask for the analysis many a times we are just throwing away the stone without realizing its importance and we give it back to the patient number two to follow up as you said we follow up our patients in malignancy now we should have the same protocol even for the stone disease so i think it's a very good presentation and in future we will again call you and we'll keep only your one presentation so that our students uh, benefit from your talk so now again if That's students right. have any question they can ask now also or during our presentation also if it can if you are around you can answer so if there is nothing in the chat box then we'll go ahead okay fine you can just stop sharing your screen sanjeev yes 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 let me see dr gite dr hiren maheshwari ji dr sharma has also joined so ganeshwar you have any suggestions or anything to tell students sir basically the presentation has been precise and uh, very uh, clear that evaluation and continuous follow up is a must as far as prevention of stone disease is concerned which is a big problem especially in hot areas mm. yeah. another area uh, like uh, besides metabolic evaluation would be to look at urine cultures because if it's an infective stone then the urine culture has to be sterile and uh, especially if it is a matrix type of stone and uh, at times uh, you know i have seen people giving potassium citrate in patients who have got matrix stones which is a contraindication it should not be given okay fine mm -hmm. uh, good uh, uh, remark achin can you share your screen now i am sharing already sir can you see my okay. screen no okay start we will go ahead with the case so can everybody see my screen uh, no oh. no i think sanjeev sharma sir has to stop it so oh, he's already stopped i have stopped it okay i will try once again yeah okay fine yes. so ojas and uh, yasi yeah sir so you have seen the sonography you know the sonography report and now this is an x -ray. yes sir uh this is a x ray uh, kidney a uh, urinary uh, bladder uh, with a uh, good exposure uh, well uh, good exposure uh, with good exposure showing uh, the bones the vertebral column is normal the bones are being normal the ribs are normal the pelvis is normal uh, the, uh, the the 
there is not enough bowel preparation as many bowel gases could be seen on the left hand side um the swas shadow is visible on both sides on the left side uh, at the level of uh, l4 l5 l2 l2 and n1 levels there are uh, multiple uh, radio opaque shadows uh, seen in the at the level of l2 l3 in the region of the uh, in the region of the left kidney and on uh, the left renal pelvis on the right hand side uh, there is a, 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 a radio opaque uh, shadow seen at the level of uh, l1 l2 around 3 uh, 3 and a half cm in size uh, at the region of the uh, uh, the right kidney uh, uh, and uh, yes sir and the renal shadows on either side on the left side could not be visualized uh, properly because of overlying bowel uh, bowel gas shadows on the right side it it can be identified yes sir and uh, the bladder every bladder appears normal Ribs up here normal, yes, sir. Yeah, sir. You want to add any? Plus, plus the reason, sir. RT five uh, at just the level of the L one, just on the right, uh, on the right side as we can see the large stone on the medial to it is likely an RT five. Right. That's all. Okay. Achin, earlier, excellent. Yeah, what this arrow is showing. Arrow. Which one, sir? Between, it's an as you can see, L one, L two, and L three. L one. Big stone. Can you see that multiple? Yeah, yeah. That. What is that? It uh, could be a stone. Could be an artifact. Or could be an artifact. Or artifact only. Does it look like our? Doesn't tonight? seem to be in the line of the pelvic collision system and the ureter cell. So, so what what are, what are the possibilities? Uh, so this is can be answered. Yes, yeah. uh, related so while, to the blood. While, while commenting on the X-ray, fecal lip. Listen, listen. While commenting on the X-ray, you have to comment about the uh, kidney. One uh, to lower the X-ray QB means lower two ribs. And at least uh, lower margin of uh, uh, sympathetic pubis or upper one third of the uh, humor should be seen. So complete pelvis should be seen. So it is not a complete X-ray. That is one. Yes. Another thing is uh, these small small strawberry-like uh, stones that stones or that may be calcified uh, uh, oh. lymph node or that may be gallbladder stone. So how to differentiate between gallbladder stone? Our renal stone that questions again arise. Another thing that can fecolit in the midline. How come it fecolit will come in between the two 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 uh, two? Uh, so radio opaque shadow on two radio opaque shadow in between the last two rib on right side with. Another one radio opaque shadow with small radio opaque shadow in the area of ren right renal pelvis, with another some radio opaque shadow, small small stone like things. It may be stone or it may not be stone. If it is dilated pelvis, maybe inside the pelvis, if it, it, if that this patient may have a dou double cyst, we don't know anything. On X-ray, okay. Fine. So it may be it may it may be calcified, it, it, it may be lymph node, it may be uh, GB stones. Another cal small calcific uh, radio opaque shadows in the opposite to the uh, IO43 uh, transverse process of L3 vertebra on right side. Then there is a sacralization of L5 vertebra. Then uh, there is no no 12 3. So this is, suppose this last one is 5 4 3 2 1. So 12 12 4 rib in the so only L3. Again up, on opposite side there is radio opaque density in the in the area of Left and multiple radio opaque density in the area of left kidney. Left kidney. Five, four, three, two, one. Opposite, opposite to the uh, L, L1 and L2. In between L1 and L2. Then there is gaseous shadow of left colon, and in bladder area, there is no any radio opaque shadow. 
So in this and, and with this uh, density of the stone can be compared with the bone bone. Okay, indirectly if they are, if they are denser than the bone, that means they are the harder stone. So this is indirect clue. So these all all uh, include uh, add, with addition to what you are told. These all things can be uh, uh, told down after seeing the X-ray cube. Yes. So here the importance of X-ray QB is the uh, uh, density of the stone, then probable uh, tentative site of the stone, then uh, is it radio opaque or radio lucent? Then uh, the, another important importance of X-ray QB is X-ray QB is very useful in case of the follow-up because every time you you or anybody may not do a CT scan. So pre-operative and post-operative importance of X-ray QB. Another thing is while planning the surgery again, there are 12, 3, or 11, 3. This is again important point. Yes, sir. Correct. So in this case, it is very important, as Dr. Gita said, there is an absent 12 rib. Okay. And if you yes, don't sir. see it properly, then you think that yes, you are sir. going between 11th and 12th rib for that upper yes, but actually, you are going through the intent oh, interval. No, no, no. So that is very important. Okay. Fine. So now next, what? Oh, just this is an X-ray. Now what do you want to do now? Uh, so I would like to do uh, first. Uh, also, in more history, I would like to inquire about certain points. And now the patients are created of two point two and uh, some deranged urine routines. So I like to inquire about uh, his total urine output every day. Uh, uh, then whether any history of consumption of any nephrotoxic drugs or any other uh, nephrotoxic medication or substances in the past. The is over. Now you are going on investigation. Don't, 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 don't mess up. Okay. Okay. Uh, so then uh, I would like to do uh, uh, first is uh, 24 hour urinary sodium uh, urine osmolarity and uh, uh, urine pH. In yes. this case, when you like to do in any case with the obstructed system, are you yes. going to get the right answer when the, there is a deranged sir, renal I would go ahead with the non-contrast CT KUB, sir. CT abdomen plus pelvis. Say very clearly, na? Okay. Yes, sir. Achy, sure. Sanju, if you are on call, uh, uh, the question will be when you We'll advise them to do 24 hour urinary metabolic studies. Okay, we can ask him later. Achin, show. Yes. This is the non contrast CT abdomen plus pelvis. Yeah. Starting with the first image, the showing the liver and spleen in the fourth one. Uh, the liver is showing. Some uh, so the uh, first image is shown. Uh, the, this is a non-contrast CT abdomen plus pelvis. The liver shows the mild uh, intrahepatic biliary uh, dilatation. Uh, the spleen appears normal. The stomach appears slightly. Uh, stomach appears distended. On the left side, the kidney is uh, shrunken. On the right side, there is gross dilatation of the pelvic axis system in the renal pelvis, mainly uh, pelvic axis system with cortex complete with thinned out on the right side, and there is a radio dense uh, shadow seen. Uh, in the uh, renal pelvis uh, with density uh, with density comparable to that of the vertebra uh, on the and other multiple uh, as we go down in the uh, there are other multiple radio dense uh, shadows seen opacity seen in the renal pelvis and in the pelvic calyx system occupying mainly going into the lower uh, right renal calyx uh, less yes, kidney Left kidney is small. 
Shankar and Shankar and a few radio density radio dance uh, uh, are seen. Radio dance thing is yeah. Yes, uh, in the right kidney there uh, looks multiple septum. I don't have to. Fine. Okay. Yeah. Achin. Achin, show yes, them sir. the result report. Yes. Maheshwari, Graneshwar, you want to say something? You want to advise them some, something about the reading the CT scan? No sir. no, sir. I think they have covered everything. Only thing is, sir, very often, I don't know, you know Gita sir would be a better person to comment about it. That uh, very often, there is a lot of emphasis on this is normal, that is normal. Uh, hmm. I think we should come main on the, uh, all other aspects are normal. Like as he described the KUB, he, he mentioned about the vertebral column, the pelvis, the ribs and everything. Mm -hmm. So, important findings. I think that would be what I would appreciate. But I, I have never been an examiner and Gita sir would be the better person to comment about it. Yeah. See, as an examiner, I can tell you that... Uh, you know, in short, everyone likes it when uh, there is a time. And as the time passes, like, you know, second, third, fourth, and tenth student when it comes, then the examiner doesn't want all this. So it I, changes I, even with the time, you know. So, I agree with, but you I should agree be prepared. With, sir, I agree with Sharma, sir, but the important highlights is like the absence of 12th rib, then density of the stone, yes. sacralization of the alpha vertebra, and yes. comment on all radio densities and uh, uh, comment on the uh, uh, the uh, kidney kidney shadow comment on the uh, swash shadow these are the standard uh, points uh, to be talked on next day kmb this part of talking happens at least five six important deep talk and if it is pertaining to that particular x-ray mm -hmm. then uh, it's good yeah it will be more uh, uh, valued. Fine. Okay. So, Achin, yes. read the result. Uh, sir, uh, uh, small size cortical scarred left kidney, approximately measuring uh, 5 by 1.8 centimeter with thin dot parenchyma with multiple radio densities seen in left, upper, mid, and lower polar and renal pelvic larger one measuring 1 into 0 0.9 centimeter. 335 HU and multiple radio densities in right renal upper mid and renal pelvic region. Larger one at right renal pelvis measuring 3.8 into 2 centimeters with bulky mal rotated right kidney approximately measuring 17 into 16 centimeters with parenchymal thickness 1.2 centimeters with dilated right PCS system with dilated right renal pelvis and upper ureter noted. The rest of it is normal, sir. No gold butter stones noted. Fine. So, just now, next what? Uh, so, as you can see, the left kidney is shrunken and the right kidney, the cortical, th the CMB differentiation is lost and the cortex is very thinned out. And also, the patient has a high creat and albuminuria and uh, albuminuria. So, uh, before uh, proceeding, I will first like to know the function of each kidney. I like to advise a functional scan for these patients. Uh, can I ask you a question? Yes, sir. Yeah, please. See, see, looking at the size of the left kidney, do you expect it to be functioning? Uh, no, sir. No, sir. Its cortex is also thinned out. It's very small and shrunken. Agreed? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, you are going to get nearly 100% function by renogram study on the right side. Mm. And further, how do you analyze function of obstructed kidney? Yes, You see, remember any investigation you ask for, the next question is how change your treatment plan at this time? Uh, so the function needs to be documented for uh, medical legal yeah. purposes. Yeah, Dr. Maheshwari and Dr. Sharma has asked you a very specific question. Okay. 
you do all the investigations number one to come to the diagnosis and to decide the line of treatment right or wrong yes sir yes sir so in this case first of all just tell me what you are planning what is your diagnosis now uh it's a left sided non functioning kidney and right sided obstructed uh, uh, obstructed hydro hydronephrosis due to the stigon calculus on the right side oh sir and Two, three, yeah. four, three, yeah. Yeah. Three, yeah. three important points. Patient urine shows multiple WBCs or pustules, what, whatever you want to call. Yes. One. Patient creatinine is raised. Yes, sir. Sir, left kidney is already gone. Yes, sir. It, CT report is suggested of hydronephrosis or hydronephrosis. Yes, sir. So, you want to do you have to take the kidney first and do the DTP scan? Or do you want to do a DTP scan first and later on to do, want, want to uh, treat this way? Just yes. simple. First read the obstruction, sir. Here. You, so, so first do you have to take, no? Simple. Yes, sir. Do yes, you have to take the kidney? Wait till the nodded creatinine will reach. And go and reassess, again reassess by doing various investigation, whatever you want to do. Yes, sir. Uh, we will so, if you do a DTP scan right now with 2.5 creatinine, with this much hydronephrotic kidney, there is a lot of background activity can be counted and the false function function can be shown too much high. That is okay. one. Yes, sir. And in after, in spite of deobstructing, if you are doing the DTP scan and spending the time in investigation, that means you are not doing the right thing. Na? Yes, <laughs> Uh, so your understanding so the first thing will be yes sir relieving the obstruction sir on the right I side and if the creatinine comes to the normal level then we can go for the so yasir and oh, oh just yes sir creatinine no, may come to me. normal creatinine may not come to normal here important is to deobstruct the kidney yes another thing is Particle thickness 1.2 centimeter on sonography and CT scan. After seeing the picture of sonography and CT scan, it may not be 1.2 centimeter. Yes, sir. Again, the again the next important question in front of you is: If you want to deobstruct the kidney, you want to do deobstruct internally or externally? When externally and when internally? External. PCN on the right. PCN. So now let us come. Yeah, so why you want to do PCNL and what are the advantages, disadvantages, and what uh, complication you can come across? The uh, advantages of PCN insertion is uh, that it can be done under local anesthesia as a, and can be done as a bedside procedure. And it can, uh, if planning for uh, PCNL surgery, PCNL. can be used as a, uh, uh, as a tract, for well formed tract to do the sur further surgical uh, procedure. And then uh, the the fluid corrected if it is passed can be sent for culture and it can be sent for uh, and help to monitor the output as well and uh, uh, yeah, this is the advantages the disadvantages are that uh, it increases the morbidity of the patient uh, because the, the carrying the PCN tube is a difficult task uh, it it the tube can get dislodged uh, and that can be another issue. And third, uh, if if proper uh, septic precautions are not maintained while maintaining the PCN tube, it can also be a cause for infection again. So just my yes, question we is, can do the sir, PCN also. We can do ultrasound. No, but my question is why you want to do PC and why you don't want to do PC and L. I mean, why you don't want to? Do you think that uh, this by doing PC and I'm just asking you by doing PC and you are going to bring down creatinine to a normal? Or it will just decrease by one or two points, and then you are you want to do two surgeries. Why why can't you just go ahead and do PCNL on the right hand side? Can you go the ahead and do it? Be, you can't. No, sir, sir. The system can be infected. There are chances the system can be so infected. You put the needle. In the okay. You put a needle. If the cleared urine comes, you go ahead with the PCNL. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And if it is infected. To answer this question, doing a PCNL with solitary obstructed kidney, having raised creatinine against doing the PCNL in a 
solitary functioning can be with nodded creatinine which is better which 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 in which situation the complications are less uh with an other creatinine so the complications would be less so that is what you are supposed to say don't yes, agree with uh, the examiner फ्यूचर पीसीएन so and then you when dr goranksha asked this you have to say that as dr geeta said that the complications will be of both anesthesia as well as the procedure would be much less with a de obstructed non infected nadir creatinine as compared to a obstructed query infected and risk creatinine yes sir okay sir so understood yes sir yes sir now two yes. points are very much clear whether you will like to do renogram now or you will is there any importance of dtpa scan at present or not number 1 number 2 in such cases what is ideal you should do first pcn see bring down the creatinine as much as possible to the nadir creatinine de obstruct the system and go ahead with the pcn pcn right yes okay. now okay now i'll tell you what we did so we went ahead and we did the pcn okay fine yes. so PCN. now what are the when you are going ahead with the pcn okay we have done the dtpa renal scan also so this is the dtpa renal scan so was this done before stone removal or after stone removal before uh, before before gorang bhai yeah it was done before before okay i think patient had come with all the reports we had asked right. because uh, it was done before only yeah it is written creatinine 2.2 yes okay fine so after doing all these things we investigated him thoroughly okay and then we went ahead and we did not do uh, nephrostomy we did not do pcn we directly went ahead with the pcn so now when you are doing pcn uh, uh, in such a huge kidney you like to do pcnl or you will like to do combined procedure or you like to do open surgery ojesh can you tell us uh, can you go back to the coronal images please <coughs> coronal ct scan images yes yes okay ojesh and yasir yes. whatever yes. we are doing okay Yes, sir. It may not be a gold standard, or it may not be the exactly what the books are mentioning, or other examiners are believing, right? Yes, sir. But so we will. You have to answer what is in your mind, what you think is right, and what is given in the book. Okay. Yes, sir. That is uh, the purpose of this uh, uh, classes. That ultimately you learn what is ex. the book oh. yeah. so we can so we can do the you want to do pcn and so i had done a pcn and now we are going we are going ahead with the pcn yes? so you want to do yes. pcn or you want to do open surgery or you want to do combination of two surgeries so combination uh, so is in uh, pcn and uh, uh, a flexible scope to evaluate all the calices and it's a large stone but we seen it also in this case okay so yasir what is your view sir uh, pc anal and uh, we can basically explain the patient that we can do in stage or we can just uh, uh, have another option of uh, open surgery or laparoscopic surgery we can give the patient that we can do in stage uh this uh, pcnl followed by uh, uh for the left kidney we can later yeah, on i am giving you i am a patient patient has given you a choice that please doctor I, you decide i, I am a new one uh, you can do anything in yeah. uh i will yes, sir uh, before you move anywhere further what type of renal pelvis is this extra renal or intra renal 
intrarenal this is intrarenal sir how easy is open surgery in this situation no sir it's difficult so then why are you talking of open surgery while talking in exam if you want if you want to do anything you can do anything in your practice while in talking in the exam you have, you have to answer the question and you have to justify your answer if you want to do open surgery why open surgery if you want to do lapro in between you told laparoscopic surgery how you how your laparoscopy will go inside See, laparoscopy, laparoscopy in this situation is absolutely uh, not justified so multiple stones in multiple calyces so if, if you want to do open surgery you have to do a multiple nephrotomy because there is an intrarenal pill already solitary functioning kidney and if you want to do multiple yes, nephrotomy what will happen so here your answer should be straight forward pcnl pcnl yes sir. single puncture multiple puncture tumko jo apne apne expert the expert is ke hisab se karo and more so over because you have already mentioned that you will be doing a nephrostomy you are going to utilize that track yes, again sir. that is one one more indication if you are doing a pcn then why why want to go for open surgery use that track only see please do not talk of anything that you have not seen in your day to day departmental work i am sure yes, you have not seen open pallorectomy for such stones in your uh, training also so then why talk about it you will not be able to defend it you will be able to defend only what you see in your day to day work yes sir see the oh, examiner okay sir examiner wants to know whether you have really worked and whether you are thinking logically or not so yes, what sir. is given in books may not be applicable every time because they are not going to go after each and every different situation and tell you what to do so ultimately it is your judgment which is most important yes sir so now in this you said that you like to do pcn so PCNL. whether PCNL. you will do how will you consider the pcn operation multiple puncture or you want to sir. use yes sir bolo simple question how he how he will consider the patient through operatively while prior to the pcn what he will tell to the patient yeah Uh, so how will you consider the patient? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, so so the, the patient, patient has to be explained. Uh, the patient has to be explained first that uh, it's probably a solitary kidney. The left side kidney is non-functional because we have seen that the uh, functional of the left kidney is less than ten percent. So it is a non-functional kidney. So as good as treating a solitary kidney on the right side. Uh, that uh, second thing is uh, that there is a large stone and there are multiple other stones on the right side. So. Uh, uh the uh, it it can be a stage pcnl we might not be uh, able to reduce the entire stone burden uh, third thing is after treatment of the uh, uh, right side the the pcnl of the right side uh, uh, the the creat won't come down to uh, entire normal even after pcn whatever is there it might still remain the same uh, that has to be explained to the patient in fact on a functional scan initially there can be still deterioration of the function on the initial scan follow up and then it might improve or it might remain the same uh, and also complications related to the pcnl surgery has to be explained which include uh, injury to the renal parenchyma uh, chances of landing in uh, bilateral renal failure then uh, uh, other complications such as pcn that is bleeding uh, uh, hematoma lung injury pneumothorax bowel injury all such things So in this case, which complication you so, are anticipating? Oh, just before you proceed, just one very very wrong comment you made was bilateral renal failure. There is nothing like bilateral renal okay. failure. Okay, yes, renal failure. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. If you tell the patient like that, you will never get operated. So Again, in, these complications, you should you should give, divide it. In the long list of the way you are talking. So the it is a there is a type of surgery, need of surgery, preoperative compli preoperative preparation, intraoperative complication, postoperative complication. And while counseling, that, that, yeah, that yeah. Straight and benefit of your surgery. Correct. So, while counseling, all these points have to come. Plus, you have to tell that PCNL is the gold standard everywhere, yes. all over the world for such stones. We are doing PCNL. That is why you can justify it like. 
sir said that don't talk about open surgery so you are justified saying pcnl what yes, is sir. the success rate of the procedure what are the percentage of complications overall percentage of complications of pcnl is 1 to 2% yes, 1 to 1% chance of bleeding if bleeding occurs you will give you may need to give blood transfusion very rarely yes. you may need to embolize the patient then solid organ or related organ injury so on every side there are organs so you have to say liver spleen gall bladder pancreas all oh, these no. organs can get injured if any organ injury occurs you may need to explore the patient however yes. chance is less than 1% then you have to say about pleural injury if that occurs you may need to put a icd icd then then you have to come down to uh, colonic injury if that occurs you may need to do a controlled fistula then you come to the most important complication which can be seen more often than the others that is uti and sepsis yes if uti and sepsis occurs patient may need higher antibiotic may need icu support may need an intensivist or a physician to see him so all these are the complications explained the last thing is that there may be a small residual stone that may remain if the small residual stone remains you have to say there is nothing to worry about may need an ancillary procedure or during stent removal we may remove it by doing rirs or you may give the patient esw yes sir when you explain the patient all these things then they will understand that you have covered everything yes sir so just looking at this x ray now we come to this patient you explain him as dr maheshwari has said dr hiren soda dr jit everyone has told you now you know you have counseled the patient but here in your mind before doing the surgery what are the important complications you are keeping in mind uh, so one is uh, uh, so uh, this can be an infected system so chances of uh, okay. post op uti yeah. sepsis is there first uh, second is uh, Uh, that may be an infected stone it's a screw white stone it may be a same thing sir now hold on are, is it a screw white stone uh actually it can be sir but it's uh, you saw the x-ray kub and you yes. saw the density mentioned the uh, density is 1 pi i don't know so it's not true stone it's not so true. don't talk of things yes, you yes. see the more you speak like this you are really digging holes around yourself yes okay don't talk of things which you will put you in difficult situation okay sir right so, so what you know, one more thing i want to tell you is we as a examiner i don't think in cases we are testing your knowledge we don't want textbook knowledge here Exactly. We want you to apply that textbook knowledge to this particular case. Yeah. So in this case, this the most important a stewed stone, definitely. This, in all probability, is a calcium oxalate monohydrate or dihydrate stone. Yes, sir. Hmm. So uh, let's talk of that. Uh, so Ojas, my question is that it, this is a see. First of all, is a very large kidney. Yes, sir. Can you see the upper stone going? One twelfth rib is not there, so it is going up to the tenth. Eleventh, yes, sir. Tenth into hostel, right? Yeah. Yes. Second thing is, it's a very thin parenchyma. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Correct. So now considering all these things, what is what are the important complications you are keeping in mind? We might require a supracostal puncture. Chances of uh, pleural hemothorax is higher. Injury. Yes. The at the same time it is on the right hand side so what else liver injury so this too you'll keep it in mind yes, third sir. thing is because it is this stone is spread all over correct you can see yes, in the sir. lower calyx also medially also there are multiple stones you might have to do multiple puncture number 1 yes sir correct and yes. there are chances that you may leave behind there are so many stones. stones yes sir and you will keep nephroscope flexible nephroscope if you have got with you you will keep it ready right yes sir. yes sir but that also with that scope you cannot remove that big stones yes sir you can use laser or whatever it is but it will it is a very time consuming so you are going to do multiple functions and you are going to remember all this right yes sir, yes, sir. 
So, uh, Gnaneshwar, with your yes, knowledge, sir. you want to add anything? You want to give them any suggestion? No, sir. No, sir. I think uh, you are, uh, everybody has summed it up perfectly. Okay. Fine. So, we did uh, uh, a PCNL and we had to go and remove those stones. We don't have nephroscope, flexible nephroscope. So, we did multiple puncture and we have cleared uh, totally. We have removed all the stones. Achin, can you show? Post op X ray cube is, I don't have, sir. Post operative, you don't have X rays? Just X ray, X ray cube, I don't have. Achha. Anyway, we have cleared. Now, the next day, as uh, you know, expected, patient had breathlessness and he developed this. No, okay, okay. So what is your say on that? Yasif? Uh, sir, there is a pleural injury, there is massive pleural effusion in the right side. And uh, uh, the patient will need an emergency okay. ICD session. If or if I am an examiner, my next question will be grade pleural injuries. You may mention massive pleural injury. Describe mild, moderate, severe, and massive pleural injury. Uh, so mild is up to two hundred ml. Uh, moderate would be two hundred ml. Injury. injury. No, no. You are yeah. talking about injury. I have, you are, uh, yeah, it is not the effusion, it is the injury that you said, it's a massive pleural injury. So, the, the massive word you have used, unnecessary. Okay, yes. yes. So, please select your words. Yes, sir. Huh? We are preparing here you so that you don't make such mistakes in exam. Yes, sir. Yes. And you have a presence of mind. Correct? Yes, sir. Okay, so tell us what is this? What what we are seeing now? Uh, there is uh, pleural there is uh, pleural effusion on the right side with uh, right lung uh, complete uh, white out, uh, and the patient will require an emergency uh, ICD insertion to uh, to drain the pleural fluid. Again, how can the lung be white out when there is pleural effusion? The lung will be collapsed. Compressed. Compressed. Yes, collapsed. Sir, collapsed. Sir, collapsed. Yes, collapsed. White lung is a different. No, no, sir, collapsed. Collapsed now. Sorry. Yes. Fine. So, where you will put the intercostal? So, uh, between it's the fifth yes. or sixth intercostal space. Fifth, sixth. In the triangle of the safety. Where? Triangle of safety, sir. Uh, yes, where it is. Sixth intercostal space in anterior midclavicular line, after posterior axillary line. Which line? So, the anterior axillary line, sixth intercostal space. Uh, in the triangle of safety, which is uh, bound by posteriorly by the so, so here, 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 where uh, 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 that means you have not done a per tennis uh, uh, intercostal tennis during surgery time. If you know, no, don't know the answer of this one, so sixth intercostal space, mid axillary. That's all. It's made exactly right. Angle of safety, 50 bar, the examiner ne pucha to bata. So, yes, sir, how will you do it? No deviation. Huh? Yes. Yes, sir. You you will... How will you just uh, tell us the important steps? I don't, because I don't want you to mess up this patient. Yes, sir. After taking the consent for uh, putting the ICU. You have taken the consent. You have taken in emergency. You are doing it in ward. Patient is absolutely okay. breathless. His pulse rate is 144. Actually, it was like that. The pulse rate was 144. And uh, he's uh, tachypneic. He was breathless. So, he was in severe we can pain. Put the, uh, ICD in the, this, uh, as mentioned, in the sixth intercostal space in the mid axillary line. We'll just take okay. an incision. Incision. Because this, that, uh, you don't want to do anything? You don't uh, want to give local? In the local anesthesia, uh, we can just uh, inject a local anesthesia. And, and, and after and the injection taking of, incision, after taking incision, what you will do? Uh, uh, we will just uh, uh, dilate the this track. We will uh, try to intercostal muscles. We will try to uh, divide the intercostal muscles. And within using an artery forceps, we can just dilate the track. Uh, after dilating the, the track, we will put the uh, intercostal drain. Asir. Then from the okay, side, sir. IR and everything will get sucked. There, there are, there are no. standard steps. 
इंसिजन करने वाले प्रोवाइड करेंगे कि स्प्रेड करेंगे कट करेंगे कि स्प्रेड करेंगे आर्टरी परसेप्ट करेंगे स्प्रेड करेंगे यस तो फिर वी विल डिवाइड टू वी विल स्प्रेड ऑन द अपर पार्ट ऑफ द दूसरा बात है क्या अपर साइड ऑफ द तब वो अगर तुमने ट्यूब डालने के बाद में वो जो वाटर वो बैग भरने का रहता वाटर डालने का रहता वो रेडी करके रखेंगे कि बाद में वाटर को भरने भरने के लिए टाइम पास करेंगे तो बाहर का हवा पूरा अंदर चला जाएगा जब तो प्रिपरेशन क्या है आना so, क्या कौन सा इंसिजन uh, कहाँ पे और थ्री स्टेप है सिंपल एंड मोस्ट इम्पोर्टेंट वॉट पोजिशन सर दर्स्ट पेशेंट वुड बी विद Uh, then keeping the ICD underwater seal bag drainage ready with 100 ml uh, normal uh, distilled water or normal saline. And then uh, local the area is painted and draped. A pulse oximeter and oxygen is a pulse oximeter attached to the patient and oximeter uh, oxygen support is also attached. At the same time, the patient is explained about the procedure and uh, the area is painted and draped. And in a uh, uh, local anesthesia is administered over the uh, uh, fifth intercostal space. Uh, uh, with a eleven number blade, a stab is made around one to one and one centimeter in length. Then, uh, taking a long artery, robot, uh, robot uh, artery, we uh, we will split the muscles uh, till we get a, a gush of air. And then the uh, uh, ICD tube is inserted into the uh, gush of air or the gush of fluid, and the ICD tube is inserted in the in the direction of the artery uh, with all the holes of the ICD uh, the tube going inside the. Uh, Without okay. opening the fluid, how gas of air will come out? Sir, fluid will come out there. Sure. How? So as if we have entered the fluid, it will come out when there is a gas of air in the fluid. Fluid, fluid, open, करना पड़ेगा क्या ऐसे fluid आ जाएगा बाहर? नहीं, sir, it is confirmed when we are opening, splitting the muscles with the artery. When there is a gas of air and fluid, it is confirmed that we are inside the fluid cavity. Artery का direction कौन से इसको कहाँ पर कहाँ रहना चाहिए? Jam shoulder की तरफ, क्या opposite shoulder की तरफ? डायरेक्शन प्रॉपरली एंड सिंपल पोजिशन है पेशेंट को बिटाओ एंड पुट अ स्टूल इन फ्रंट ऑफ एम जस्ट टेल टू पुट बोथ इज आर्म इन फ्रंट इफ यू डन द आई सी डी यू से दिस ओनली You will not say propped up position and this and that. Posterior axillary line me you separate the muscles and then you take the uh, long artery and along with that the tube goes in together. Yes. So book me jo procedure diya hai ek bar standard pad lo aur magab kar do. Because ye question PCNL me aa sakta hai. Yes. Excellent. So this is the post ICD insertion X-ray showing the ICD in the right side. The lung is inflated better than the previous X-ray chest. Uh, now you see you have in this patient three tubes. There is a ICD tube. There is a nephrostomy tube. I There is a fully catheter. What and would be your sequence of number of tubes? And no, no, Pankaj, and the left kidney. In the left. Stone, infect, stone infected, non-functioning left kidney. Apart from these three things, they have got a left kidney also. No, no, no. What I was asking was different. Yeah. yeah. But now you Correct. have these three tubes coming out of the body. What will yeah. be the sequence of removal of these tubes? Yes, that is the so most I, important thing. Uh, first, if the lung expansion is adequate, the ICD would uh, come out. Okay, I will tell you the lung has expanded totally. The column you has stopped moving. You can see that. Moving. Very good. You remove the ICD and moving. then you remove nephrostomy. All the water will go in the chest. Water will again fill. <laughs> Better no, think why why ICD was required because the yes. track was established, right? Yes, sir. 
so then remove nephrostomy the, first let it nephrostomy first sir okay and, and after distally, that, they should, distally there should be no obstruction then proximal yes. will heal so always keep the folies okay yes sir so remove nephrostomy let yes, the sir. leakage stop see that there is no more effusion okay then sir. remove icd then remove folies catheter you need to keep the prayer system low pressure no yes yes sir otherwise with, with the yes, digestion sir. and again everything will go up that's yes, it suppose let me ask you suppose there is a uh, connection fine now yes, what sir. will happen suppose you have removed uh, icd first what are the if we have removed the icd sir, there will be there will be recurrence of this uh, effusion first of all there may be nothing okay so everything will be normal nothing will normal, happen yes, second yes. second what will happen A leakage of the from the patient side, we can have leakage of this uh, fluid. So that will Urine. again reflux. The patient will have again pleural effusion. Correct? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And again, you have to go inside. So that yes. is why Doctor Pankaj Maheshwari asked you. That is why we have kept this case. First time, first time. Yes. That how we will follow the three tubes. That is the most important. Yes, sir. Understood? Yes, sir. Yes, yes. Fine. So now this is a way you do. The only thing is that because this patient was admitted and we had some logistic problem, like you know he was in a free class and again it was difficult to get him again. We decided to operate him on the left hand side for a nephrectomy. Yes, so we sir. took a decision that we will not remove the. Uh, any tubes at present okay. we took the opinion of nephro i mean physician as well as anesthetist and they agreed that we can go ahead so now left side how will you remove the kidney so you can do uh, open nephrectomy why you want to do open or why can... you want to do la la laparoscopic oh, we can do laparoscopy it depends on the we will explain so, to the patient to do you mean the reason na Why sir is discussed yeah, with anesthetist? The why sir is discussed with anesthetist? Because the patient has the ICD. So, uh, sir, we will do an open because the patient already has a compromised right side lung, and uh, there's a tube. Exactly. Tubes. So when you give kidney position, what happens? Yes, sir. The yes, sir. Yeah, the the ICD will compress. You give lateral position that can't be done. So in the pneumo peritoneum, there can be compromise in the pulmonary function, sir. Yeah. First of all, in exam, uh, until and otherwise, the examiner asks about left kidney. When you remove the kidney, and what are the indication? Don't tell. Ne there nephrectomy spontaneously from your side, because in okay. this patient there are economical crises. Uh, Hoga or kuch. प्रॉब्लम हो गया और कर दिया तो ठीक है एग्जाम में वो साइड का सिम्टोमेटिक नहीं है सब ओनली फंक्शनिंग सॉलिटरी फंक्शनिंग किडनी राइट साइड की थी सिम्टोमेटिक किडनी राइट साइड की थी राइट साइड का ऑपरेशन हो गया लेट देम पेस्ट लेट दिस पेशेंट शुड बी अ फ्री ऑफ द कॉम्प्लिकेशन एंड फ्री ऑफ द सिम्टम्स वेट फॉर सम टाइम एंड थिंक अबाउट अपोजिट किडनी इफ इट रिक्वायर्ड सर्जरी नॉट रिक्वायर्ड सर्जरी इफ रिक्वायर्ड सर्जरी व्हाई सर्जरी इज रिक्वायर्ड दिस इज द टोटली डिफरेंट इशू दैट्स व्हाट आई फील पर्सनली Uncle no, no. I would to... agree that you see. Uh, let's not talk of left nephrectomy at all. Uh, is uh, it is as it is a poorly functioning kidney. Uh, these small stones in a nearly non-functioning kidney are nearly. It is impossible for them to really grow, obstruct, or cause infection. So my plan in this patient would be to clear the right side, observe the left side, and see as it uh, happens in the future. But uh, okay, there are a lot of. Uh, logistical decisions which are taken but from exam point of view no uh, no no don't even yes, talk about the factor pankaj pankaj and yes, i 100% agree the actual the uh, discussion is only for the right hand side yes, and still uh, complication has taken place now because this patient has got uh, this non functioning kidney on the left hand side <coughs> sir that way okay the right side is okay The every the tubes and everything is out, and he is absolutely fine. We have re-admitted him. 
and he has got a stone he has got an infection which is coming in the urine he has got some pain on the left hand side and he requires the management for the left side so in this case how they will go about so let's take this question in the way that yes, this yes. patient is symptomatic on left side what do yes. you want to do for left side yes uh, okay i agree Thanks. Yes, Ojas. Yes, sir. So as you said, because the patient has ICD in C2 and the lateral position will be difficult. No, now it's over. We have come yes, to the conclusion. Everything is fine on the right hand side, as you said very rightly. First, you first what you have done is you have removed the nephrostomy, correct? Then you have, there is no problem. You have removed the police catheter. You have also removed intercostal drain. Everything is fine. Patient is absolutely fine. Okay. Okay. He okay. has got the. Uh, uh, still pus cells in the urine he has got pain on the left hand side and he has got a stone on the left hand side so uh, it is a patient so now he, it is a not functioning yes sir he has got some uh, blood pressure issue also even though he is young so now you have decided to do some treatment for the left side so what you left nephrectomy so what uh, is indication for nephrectomy on left side Uh, so the patient has, as sir mentioned, he has hypertension. So uh, renovascular hypertension, for the one will be nephrectomy as a treatment. Second, the patient has an obstructed yes. system on the left hand side, symptomatic uh, uh, disease on the left hand side. Therefore, these are the indications for doing the open uh, and it's a non-functioning obstructed uh, with uh, renal stone stones. and stones in the kidney. No, no. Or oh, just yes, doctor. Gita has asked you in any patient. If the patient has got non-functioning kidney, yes, sir. So in which cases you will not touch that kidney, or other way, in which cases you will remove that kidney? The non-functioning. If patient has kidney, a persistent pain, patient has uh, non-functional kidney, we will calculate. Any kidney which is obstructed, adrenophrotic, non-functioning, symptomatic kidney should be removed. Yes, sir. non obstructed non functioning or symptomatic kidney may not be removed yes yes sir. so what are the symptomatic kidneys non functioning symptomatic kidney what are the symptoms sir pain one pain second second is patient has uh, features of infection like fever yes infection two hypertension hypertension three and hematuria uh, hematuria malignancy 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 yes. stone with malignancy malignancy stones is one is the one of the indication and very large yes. kidney very large kidney if yes. your patient has got like this right sided kidney will you keep it inside no sir no, so please understand these are the indications so now in this case what type of surgery you like to do so, open, open left nephrectomy sir open nephrectomy what you are anticipating patient has just see patient has got a very small kidney you just see the ct scan yes is a very small kidney there are stones he has got infection so what type of infect what type of kidney you are expecting pyonephrosis only small pyonephrosis part. there is no hydronephrosis where is pyonephrosis is a very small kidney so what you are expecting small small fibrils difficult chronic so pyonephrotic kidney out of additions yes so are you thinking in terms of xanthogranulomatous pyonephritis yes can it be means it may be just a rock hard kidney it can be so that you will keep it in mind uh, yes sir yes sir so unless and until you are really very good in laparoscopy means i will not touch it. and yes, to be sir. very plain even we when we opened up it was so difficult to just dissect it it was like a rock hard achin can you just yeah yes sir yes. Yes. So, in the exam also, when such a case comes, the only reason of keeping is this that you should know. 
So what yes. are the possibilities? Ganesh, sir, you want to comment? Yes, yes, yes. yes, sir. What you have said is very true. Sometimes you know, I have had occasions when I have been called by other urologists and surgeons because they could not find the kidney, such small yeah. kidney. No, that is what happened. We were, <laughs> initially, we were thinking that some intestines, they are uh, uh, flabby kidney. You know, at one stage, spleen also appeared like that. Ultimately, we found out okay, it is not a muscle. It is a hard kidney. So, in such difficult uh, type of nephrectomies, uh, you must know how to do a subcapsular nephrectomy. Yeah. Because if you try to do uh, extra capsular or extra geroidal in such type of nephrectomies, there is always a very high chance of injuring the surrounding. Correct. In case of the jantos, in case of the kidneys which have a rock solid surrounding area, in such situation, yeah. you must know how to do a subcapsular nephrectomy. Yes. So it yes. is very, very important uh, type, uh, important and helpful surgery. One must know it, how to do it. Because um, definitely in difficult time, that surgery will help you. Because even the pancreas, on the left tail of pancreas, in doing this, you can damage it. So, okay, yes. Ojas, can you just tell us, while doing this surgery, what are the possibilities? Uh, so, first, first, this is a chronic uh, scarred kidney. So, uh, the renal vessels would be, uh, as in uh, plastic, as in uh, narrowed, uh, vessels would be there. It could be a really lot of adhesions to the surrounding structures. Yeah. Usually uh -huh. in such type of kidney, in chronic uh, of the chronic uh, pyelonephrotic mm -hmm. small scarred kidneys, the renal artery is usually a small and vein is comparatively large. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. So, and all these vascular structures are encased into the fibrotic uh, process yes. surrounding, the, surrounding the kidney. So, dissecting a vessel separately and ligating it, it may be difficult. Yes, so, there, there may be a need of pen block dissection. There may be a need of going for the pressure nephrectomy. There may be a chances of, now if left side, there the chances of injuring, if you put the colon is stuck, chances of injuring the colon. Yes. yes so, sir. as it is a left side, the vascular complications are comparatively less because the vein is long and it can be ligated or tight you know, if, if it is bleeding also. Yes. So uh, another important thing is uh, the superior mesenteric artery that is also important, vein and the pancreas, tail of pancreas. So these are the very important structures. So we yes. can... Theoretical reported incidence of uh, plural complications in case of the PCNL by doing by uh, supracostal puncture incident. Uh, yes, and Ojas. Less than 1%, sir. 0.2 to 0.5%. Supracostal puncture and less than 1%. Uh, 5 to 10%. So I am not sure. In, in supracostal, sir. So I don't ah, know, sir. PCNL by supracostal puncture. Plural incidence of plural complication. I don't know that the exact. Uh, I don't know, sir. Ankur, sir. I feel it is 10 to 12 percent. No, uh, Dr. Gita, it depends on which excess you take. You see, just supracostal would not help us. It will be. Uh, whether it is supra 10th, I mean supra 12th, supra 11th, or supra 10th. Got it. It is very safe to go supra infra 11th. The possibility mm. of injuring plura if you remain supra infra 11th is practically zero. And it is around 10% if you go in 10th intercostal mm. space. You should try not to go above 10th intercostal space. If suppose you have a patient who has a thoracic kidney or a very high rising kidney then probably a pleuroscopic controlled PCNL is better than taking this risk. Uh, to avoid a pleural violation, you should be lateral to the mid scapular line and do your puncture and dilatation in inspiration phase. Rather, it is important to keep the patient in the same phase of respiration during your from your puncture to dilatation. 
so a good coordination between the surgeon and anesthetist becomes very important and always use a apply one, sheet yes one, yeah one more thing is you can do an angle pcnl means what you know you may not be going along the that uh, axis instead of that it has been shown in the literature like you know you can go uh, between 11th and 12th rib in the angled instead of going uh, into the axial so, so what sir is saying is that you make a skin puncture subcostal but direct your uh, needle towards the upper pole yes this is what you are saying right? yes Correct. so you Correct. know sir i have very firm thoughts about this uh, which i would share but i would uh, leave it for dr geeta to tell the students whether they should say this in exams or not i strongly feel that uh, you know literature wise they say that the risk of bleeding is higher in supracostal puncture the problem is when you try to prevent pleural complication by making a oblique tract subcostally then the risk of bleeding increases but if you make a proper tract the risk of bleeding will not be high if you remain below the 10th rib lateral to mid scapular line do your puncture and dilatation in inspiration the risk of pleural violation is very very low so in selected patients you can safely do it and even if it happens as a last step of your supracostal exercises move your cm towards the uh, cp angle if you see clear cp angle uh, at the end of procedure then you have not violated the pleura if you see that the cp angle is obscured then just put your initial puncture needle in the pleural space aspirate if it is clear liquid means if it is water you could just aspirate it out without putting in a pictorial catheter but if it is blood then a 12 or 14 french pictorial catheter can be placed in the pleural space so this is how i would do the supracostal axis pankaj you mentioned it is to be done puncture and dilatation in inspiration or expiration inspiration uh, i'm sorry in expiration because the inspiration the pleura is coming down yeah, yeah, yeah. In expiration I, i i take back my word it is an expiration agree You know, I would, I would uh, um, suggest the residents then they can read the uh, an article written by Pankaj in a special issue of uh, Journal of Endo Urology on Percutaneous Renal Access, and I think even the Smith textbook of Endo Urology heavily cites that particular article. Yes, sir. Thank you, Chandra. I Fine. I agree with Pankaj sir, but uh, as far as angle PCN is concerned, the purpose of selecting angle PCN uh, is uh, to avoid the pleural complication. One, in case of the uh, hydronephrotic kidney having a less parenchyma uh, and mobile kidney, um, um, that means uh, the, the minimum surrounding perinephric adhesions or fat standing in such situation. Uh, that angle pcnl is uh, uh, useful but in in case of the uh, non hydronephrotic kidney or uh, kidney having a good parenchyma there is always a torque in such case of in while doing the angle pcnl in in the uh, in the uh, in thinking of bringing the kidney down uh, and the chances of bleeding is more that's what uh, pankaj sir is already told True. so the torque torque happens in case of the good parenchyma and torque happen in case of the less parenchyma so in hydronephrotic kidney kidney may come down and in, in spite of having a torque the parenchyma may not bleed but in case of the adequate parenchyma or good parenchyma there is always more chance of bleeding see there are two uh, just the uh, advantage means why uh, much of the torque doesn't take place in uh, supra this thing angle uh, superior pole the two reasons one is that when we do nephrectomy also you can see that when we can pull the kidney it is almost uh, two point means two to 2.5 times the lengthening of the vessels can take sir sir, sir it is possible sir. only in a place where there is a perinephric fat standing is less yeah then only Correct. the kidney will come down otherwise yes. if there is a perinephric fat standing previously operated kidneys or um, uh, then it becomes difficult ha uh, it is very difficult yes then proper uh, supracostal puncture is always helpful in such situation 
Yeah. But in this, what we can do is just to do a selective. Just go there, remove the stone. Don't try to enter into the pelvis. Yes, sir. Just remove that stone and come out. Yes. So, anything else, uh, Nanak sir, you want to add? No, sir. No, sir. <coughs> this discussion so now, can go on for a very long time. We have discussed. You should know what is right and what is uh, what you are going to say in exam after the yes. full discussion. Okay. And if you yes. have got any yes. queries, please let us know. Right? Yes. Sometimes uh, after after removing the nephrostomy. Till, till, till the removal of nephrostomy, there is no any pleural complication. But after yes. removal of the nephrostomy, chronically, there is small seepage from the kidney area to the pleural area. And slowly, yeah. it will develop a chronic left uh, hydrothorax or uh, consequently pyothorax. Like. Yes, so, yes. So, uh, in such situations, if suddenly patient had, after a discharge or before, before just discharge, if we had a breathlessness, the first your diagnosis is the plural complications secondary to the uh, patient in spite yeah. of first thing for other parts. Yeah, so even if I am doing uh, above the 11th read, I always ask patient to do x-ray chest after a few days and come back. Yes, sir. Okay, Pankaj bhai, you want to add anything? Yes, sir. I think well covered. Okay. So vascular you are really a very good case, Dr. Sir. Sir, vascular Very complications, good. some other times we have to discuss. Vascular complications. Yeah, we have got, yes, yes, that we will do it. Yes, sir. Right? Okay. Oh, this okay. patient had some malrotated kidney, no? Was there some? Yeah, it is it's such a huge kidney, you can't make out. It is malrotated or not. Okay. Yes, Coming up. Sir, plus, I would like to ask this uh, subcapsular sarcoma, but subcapsular. We should do subcapsular if the kidney is so much small and fibrosed. Sir, can I know what is subcapsular nephrectomy, sir? So, so, uh, so after reaching to the retroperitoneum, if you feel that there is a rock solid retroperitoneal area and the kidney may not be get palpated, so in such situation we have to open the perinephric hat and capsule in one particular area and dissect the kidney from inside the capsule, all around, except okay. hilar area. Okay. So okay. it's like a, it's like a removing the prostate by open prayers prostate. There's a finger goma the other pora kidney. Agar under say adhesions nay There is usually okay. no there are there are usually no adhesions from inside of the capsule. Okay. So if you if you just move a finger all around like a thyroid nodule removal or prostate by prostate removal. All area will be get separate. So only issue, uh, only remaining area is at the hilar area, and we have to we have to lay open that hilar area capsule and ligate the uh, vessels outside the capsule. Okay. So yes, if, if if you feel it is very if you feel it yes, is very yes. difficult by op opening the capsule at the hilar area along along the axis of the vessel, then you can just uh, transfix the vessels from inside, so but there are chances uh, of the bleeding. Bleeding is more, but by second technique. The so standard technique in given in book is lay open the capsule along the longitudinal axis of the vessel and ligate the vessel outside the capsule. Yes, sir. And and keep this capsule as it is inside the retrofill. Yes, sir. So, kabi kabi apne dekha hoga na capsule open hone ke baad mein just like a small fleshy mass. Easily, uh, uh, yes. out, out of the capsule se bahar yes, sir. So, this is uh, all you, about the sub capsule. Sometimes these are also called as piecemeal nephrectomies because you cannot remove completely. So, you remove, then like it, then you remove, then you like it. Even the hyalur vessels, what Sir said, becomes a big stump. So, you cannot go yes, with sir. a free tie. So, you have to transfix it. So you cut little bit, you transfix. Then again you cut little bit, then you transfix. So you don't try to separate out the renal artery and vein. It is not possible only. Like, like, like doing hysterectomy by gynecology. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good case. Okay. Good night, everybody. Okay. Good night. Thank you. Thank you very much. Maheshwari, thank you very much.
थैंक यू सर थैंक यू सर